What's up guys? I'm super excited about this series. Oh, man, so last week we kicked off a conversation. We talked about unity and how important it is for us all to be on the same page. But this week we're going to talk about how nearly everything is better when it's experienced with a group of people. Especially a group of people that you know, like your friends. All right? It's way better than experiencing things alone. I mean, think about it. All right? Watch a movie by yourself, it's not so fun. Watch a movie with your friends, way more fun. All right, join a new sports team, it's nerve-wracking when you don't know anybody. But then, all of a sudden, your friend that you played with last year is back on your team this year, and now it's way more fun. You see, I'm an adult. I'm a grown-up. And I still text friends to see if they're going to go to an event that I'm attending. Why? Because the idea of walking into a new place without a familiar face in sight is nerve-wracking and stressful. You see, that feeling of having someone beside you can be one of the best feelings in the world. It can make you feel braver, and that's why, why nobody goes bungee jumping or skydiving alone. Because that stuff's scary. And what's ironic is that when it comes to walking with God, we tend to do it the opposite. All right, we go to basketball games and birthday parties with other people. We go to class and we finish school projects with other people. But we tend to think that we're on our own when it comes to the one area that matters most, and it's our faith. You see, when it comes to following Jesus, we hesitate. We hesitate to let others in. You know, see, we pray alone. We read the Bible alone. We have doubts and questions, but we wonder about them alone. You see, the truth is we all have a natural tendency to keep our faith journey to ourselves. And even if we go to church, most of us, most of our beliefs, our prayers, our doubts, victories, failures all happen alone. But think about it. We know every other area of life is better with other people beside us. So why are we doing faith alone? You see, so today we're going to look at, at some accounts from the book of Acts. It's in the Bible. And see, Acts, it tells us about the things that Jesus' follow, Jesus's followers did as they began to tell the world about him. And the story we're going to look at today starts in Acts 4. You see, Peter and John, two of Jesus' disciples, were preaching before a huge crowd. And this was definitely still a risky move for them because the religious leaders were still out to get them. See, they had just gotten Jesus, and now they're out to get his followers. And so this is a risky move. And as soon as these dudes start preaching, they're confronted by the priest of the temple. And they're arrested on the spot and put into jail. And so the next morning, John and Peter are brought before a council of rulers, elders, and teachers. So basically all the important guys you don't want to take off. And when they get there, Peter and John were asked this. It says in Acts chapter 4, verse 7, it says, By what power or in whose name have you done this? You see, there's no way they could talk their way out of this. Right? But knowing what was on the line, like their lives, Peter speaks up, and this is what he says in Acts uh, 4.10. It says, let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, the man you crucified by whom God raised from the dead. There is still salvation in one, no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. You see, the passage goes on to say how amazing the leaders, how amazed the leaders were as they heard this. Right, the religious leaders, they were, they were impressed. They were impressed, but that doesn't mean that they agreed with what Peter and John were teaching. And so the leaders told them to never speak about Jesus again. But Peter and John weren't about to accept that response. They're like, mm-mm, mm-mm. It says in uh, verse 19 and 20, it says, Do you think God wants us to obey you rather than me? We cannot stop telling about everything we have seen and heard. You see, the leaders, they didn't know what to do with that. They're like, what? They weren't used to people showing no fear. Or, or, or at their threats or refusing to do what they said. This is not something people did. And on top of that, even if these big wigs didn't like what Peter and John were saying, it was very obvious that the crowd was. The crowd did like what they were saying. So thousands of people were deciding to follow Jesus when Peter and John were preaching. And so the religious leaders, they wanted to make an example out of Peter and John, but they also didn't want to start a riot. With the, people, with the people in the crowd. And so, what, so what did they do? They let Peter and John go. Just, okay, let them go. 
That's a pretty amazing story, especially when you consider the kind of people John, Peter and John used to be. You see, in fact, Luke tells a story in his gospel about how Peter denied Jesus three times, knowing him. And so what changed? Well, they had the power of the Holy Spirit for one, which was an amazing gift, but that wasn't all. See, they also had each other. Peter and John were able to rely on each other's courage and feed off of another's bravery. They knew that together they were braver. And the same is true for us. Together we are braver. But even though you may not be in physical danger, there are so many parts of our lives, parts of your faith, that require courage, especially in places like school. You see, for instance, it takes bravery to say yes to somebody if somebody asks you if, they're, if you're a Christian. It takes bravery. It takes bravery to forgive other people, especially people who hurt you. It takes bravery to be nice to your siblings, because that's real hard to do. I get it. Bravery. It takes bravery to say no to some things, bad things, things that will pull you away from the life that God wants you to have. And it's going to take bravery to say yes to other things, the things that God wants you to do, but it's scary. It's out of your comfort zone. You see, living out your faith in a real way will always require some bravery. And that's why it's so important that you surround yourself with friends who also love Jesus. Because together, guys, we're braver. Together, we're braver. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for uh, just the example of uh, John and Peter and just how they fed off of each other. And because they were together, they were able to, to stand firm on what they believed. And they were able to be brave and be able to speak out against those who were trying to, to, to stop the, the spread of your word and the spread of Christianity, Lord. Because uh, I just love what he said there. Uh, do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him? Lord, see, it's just such a powerful moment that even when people tell us what to do, Lord, that we need to listen to what you are telling us to do because you are so much more important and what you tell us to do is so much more important than what other people have. So, Lord, let's just pray that we can continue to be brave and stand up to what uh, the people are telling us that don't go against what, that go against what you want for our lives and we can continue to live out our lives and I'll live out our faith in a real way and be honest and be brave together. And in your name we pray, amen. Adios.